You guys, I am so excited that episode 2 at last is a reality. You guys, you don't even know. You don't know what has been happening. Like, I've been having call and like a little bit of each on my show. That is why this has been delayed. But today, today, episode 2 is a go. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to my channel. If you're seeing this face for the first time, my name is Vivian Okeke. I'm a fashion designer based in Abuja. And on this channel, I share the process I use in recreating outfits, either requested or what I want. I show you guys the process from drafting the pattern to cutting to sewing to the after look. Now, if that is something you're interested in and you're yet to start sewing and you're a beginner, you don't even know anything about sewing and you're thinking of how to start sewing, I am bringing solution for you by letting you know the basic things you need to know when you want to start sewing. I have done episode one and episode one is on the general tools you need to get if you really want to start sewing. If you want to make that dream a reality, go watch my episode one, get those tools ready, okay? And come join us on episode two. Now episode two is going to be me breaking down how to take body measurements. I know on episode one, I said I was going to do the basic terms you need to know when it comes to sewing, but then the basic terms I want to actually emphasize on are the ones that have to do with the body measurement. On this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to properly read your tape. Yes. So please, right now that you're watching this video, if you've gotten your tools, you should have your tape. Please go get your tape because that is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you how to properly read a tape and how to take your body measurements. And that is what episode 2 is going to be all about. So thank you for joining me and hope you have clicked on that subscribe button. Girl, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and do not forget to click on the notification bell there. So whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, okay? And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up. And if you feel like you have a friend, a relative, a loved one that you think they should start sewing, go ahead and share my video with them. I'm going to be showing you how to just copy the link and then you can paste it on any platform, social media platform which they are on, either WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, whatever platform they are on. You can just copy the link from this YouTube and paste it on there for them. And thank you so much for joining. Let's dive into the video. So yeah, please get your tip. First thing we're going to be doing is actually knowing how to read the tape properly. If you have your tape with you, I want you to look at your tape properly. Take a look at it. I'm going to be putting on a tape picture on the screen for those of you that don't have a tape yet so you know what I'm talking about. Now if you look at your tape, you can see that we have those lines. You can see that there is a little line here, a short line. And then we have the next that is a bit longer than the first one and then we have the one that is longer than the second and longer than the first and then we have the longest so we have four lines here and each of them are different lengths so this is the longest this is the next to the longest and this is the one next to the to this and to this and this is the shortest so yes each of these um, lines indicates something and that is what I'm going to be talking about right now. I'm going to be telling you what each line represents. Now, the first line you see on your tape is the shortest line. And it is the tiniest and it is the smallest, okay? Now, that line, um, let's just label it right now as A. So, the shortest line on your tape, let's label it right now on as A. We'll come back to it, okay? Now, the next to it is the... The, the one a bit longer than the first line, which is A. Now, this one a bit longer, we'll name it B. Okay? So, yes. Now, after that, we have another line. And that line looks exactly like the first one. And which is, yes, it's actually exactly like the first one. So, it is still A. It is the same length and it is the same. It's just the same. So, that is still A. Now, after that, we have the one that is longer than the A and the B. This one and this should be named C okay so hope you have that indicated that this should be named C now the next one we have is the longest and this should be named D so let's go back to those lines now the first line that we named a that is called a point okay it is called a point and if you look at your tape properly you can see that it, the point or cause one two three four times yes it appears four times before 
your one inch now the next one after it which is the b that is called a quarter inch i'm just going to indicate that picture here on the screen this line is called this is the b it is called a quarter inch so after you have the point which is the shortest the next to the point which is a bit longer than the point is called a quarter inch now the line that we name c which is longer than the um b and the a which is longer than the point and the quarter inch is called half inch okay note that please i hope you have your book your pen your writing materials please jot this down in case you are not the type that catches up fast so you just go back and look at it okay so the one that is longer than the a and the b is called a half inch and then the longest line is the one inch is the where you have the one inch the two inch you can see it occurring like this now between your one and your two you can see that there is always a point on the tape now take note of that. Now for your quarter inch, your course two times between your one and your two and your three and your four. You can see that your quarter inch is there two times, two times, two times. And then your half inch is there just once between your one, your two, your three, your four, your five. You can see that your half inch is there just once. So now let's read this tape properly. The first line, which is the shortest line, is the point. The next that is a bit longer than the shortest is your quarter inch. And after your quarter inch, you still have a point. Before you get to your half inch, your half inch line is longer than your point and your quarter inch. And then after your half inch, you still have a point. And then you have another quarter inch. And then you have a point. And then you have your one inch. Now, after the one inch, you still have a point. You can call that one and a point. And then after the point, you still have a quarter inch, which is one and a quarter inch. After your quarter inch, you still have another point, which is your one quarter and a point. When you're reading that, you say one quarter and a point. And then after your point, you have your half inch, which is one and a half inch. Now, after your half inch, you have your point again, which is one half and a point. So when you want to read that, you say one half and a point. Now, after that, you have another quarter inch. If you want to read that, you say one half and quarter. And then after the quarter inch, you still have your point. If you want to read that, you say one half quarter and the point. After that, then you have your two inches. I hope that is clear to you. So wherever you see your point, please know that is the shortest line is your point. The shortest line from all these lines on your tape is your point now the next one that is longer than the shortest line is your quarter inch and the next which is longer than the quarter and the point is your half inch and then you have your one inch two inch three inches i hope that's clear please let me know in the comment section if you're able to get this tape reading because i want you guys to understand how to read your tape it is very essential you know how to read this tape because now we're going to move into the body measurements So now moving on to the body measurements, um, I'm going to start this accordingly and um, I'm going to talk about each of those um, measurements, body measurements that we're going to be calling out. I'm going to talk about each of them and where they can be used. Made lots of mistakes, taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great, popping off, singing straight, never Now the first is the shoulder. So the shoulder is the first point that you take when you are taking your body measurements. Looking at the body form, you can see that after your head is your neck. Now after your neck, what do you have next is your shoulder. If you're making just probably a dress, jumpsuit, a top, you need your shoulder measurement. Now these are the places that you need to take your shoulder measurements. So the first point that you take when taking body measurements is the shoulder and this is how you take your shoulder measurements you place your tape from the points or the joints that connect your shoulder to your neck and um, right now as you're watching this video i want you to touch that bone it is actually located here so that point there is your shoulder you place your tape from that 
bone to the next one or from your right to your left and then you calculate whatever you have there and that is how you take your shoulder measurements so when taking body measurements it is important you take your points first before you start taking the round measurement of those points what do i mean what i mean is if you want to take measurement of a client or yourself or anyone you have to take the points now what are the points the points are the places where each of those um, measurements are located after your shoulder the next is your upper bust your upper bust is where your breast starts from which is also known as the chest line so that is a point you have to know where your breasts start from so you place your tape from your shoulder making sure that the tape does not move from your shoulder and then you go down to the upper part of your breast where it starts from where it starts from forming from and then you place your tape from the shoulder to that point you measure out what you have and you mark that down now that is the point that is the point that indicates that from your shoulder to the place where your boss starts from this is how many inches Now the next point you need to take is your bust point. And how do you locate your bust point? Your bust point is your nipple, where your nipple is located. So when taking these measurements, you make sure you place your tape on the shoulder and then you go down to your nipple. You make sure your tape sits on your nipple and you measure out what you have there. You guys remember that these are your vertical measurements. These, these are called your vertical measurements, which are your points. And all these points that you're taking, after taking those points, you still come back and take the round measurement of those points. So, but before you take your round measurements, you need to know where those, those measurements will sit, your round measurements, where they're going to sit. So, you need to know the points where they're going to sit. And that is why you place your tape on the shoulder and then you take your points straight down. So, it's like placing your tape like this and then you're taking, you, have, you just leave the tape to fall. And then you start, you start marking each point where your breast starts from, where your nipple is located, like that, like that, like that. So once you are done taking your nipple point, which is your bust point, you move over to your under bust. Now, how do you locate your under bust? Your under bust is where your breast stops. Something that has a beginning has an ending, right? And the beginning of your breast is known as the upper bust. The middle where your nipple sits is known as your bust point. And then where your breast end, your bust, where it ends, is known as your under bust point. So you place your tape from your shoulder, making sure it does not leave your shoulder. And then you go down to the place where your bust ends and then you take the measurements there, you mark out what you have there. So once you have that sorted out, the next point you need to take is your half cut now I like to call it waistline but most people like to call it half cut now what is your waistline your waistline is where your tummy where you feel like your tummy is like your tummy is located your stomach your waistline where you feel like it is located and you need to place your tape from your shoulder making sure your tape does not leave the shoulder and you take the tape down to where you you have your tummy starting from okay and now once you have that measurement indicated The next point you need to take is your hip point. Now, most people like to say that your hip point is the um, biggest part of your body, but I've seen a lot of people that have bigger bust than their hip. Some people have bigger tummy than their hip. So yeah, I don't like to say it's the biggest part of your body point. Your hip point is where your ass budges, and that is where your hip point is located. So you place your tape from your shoulder making sure that the tape does not leave the shoulder and you take it down to your hip point and you mark that down so you guys remember that all we are taking right now are points these are called vertical measurements i'm going to be making an episode where i talk about what and what you need to make a particular outfit if you're making a top the measurements you need if you're making a skirt the measurements you need if you're making a jumpsuit, the measurement you need. If you're making a trouser, the measurement you need. I'm going to be separating it for you guys on a different episode after, probably after the sewing term. The next episode should be that. So I'm going to help you guys 
in case you are still new and you're still struggling with that i'm just going to help you separate that so you know what measurements you need when you're making a top the measurements you need when you're making a, a trouser like that like that like that so let's move on 6 a.m and i'm up again now the next thing you need to know is your new point now your new point most times um where you you actually need to provide your new point is when you're making a trouser yes that is where you need your new point now your new point is one or two inches above your knee i'm just going to put up a picture so you see you place your tape from your waist when you're making a trouser you place your tape from your waist and you go down you go down one or two inches above your actual knee and then you take the measurements there that is your new point and after that you have the length now that you have this point indicated now that you know that you you take your shoulder you take your upper bust points you take your bust points your under bust points your waistline and then your hip points the next thing we need to take is the round measurement of these points let's start from the upper bust point now to take your upper bust point you place your tape on the place where your your bust or your breast starts from you place the tape around it and then make sure that you make this a little bit tight and once you've done that you go ahead and check what you have there and that is your round upper bust your round chest so you can see that we have already indicated the point which is the upper bust point and now we are back to taking the round measurement of those points and the first is the round upper bust and we have taken that that the next you need to take is your round bust so once you have your bust point indicated you need to mark your round bust on that bust point and this is how you take it you place your tape around your nipple that's your the fullest part of your bust you place your tape around it and then you get the measurement you need that is your round bust so once you have that now the next place is your round under bust we indicated the point for the under bust now you go ahead and take the round on under bust and how do you do that you place your tape round your under bust where your bust ends you place the tape now round your tape is going round the first measurement we did was vertical now we're going horizontal which is round so when you hear somebody saying round it means you need to take your tape round that actual point and we'll move to the half cut which is the waistline now to get your round waist you just have to do the same thing you did for your bust and your under bust you place your tape round your waist and now once you have that measurement indicated you move ahead to the round hip after taking your hip point after marking down your hip point you need to know your round hip right and how do you do that you go ahead and place the tape round your hip you already know where your hip is sitting right that is the point now you need to know the round measurement of that point that is where your round hip comes in you place the tape around your hip now once you have that done we move to the round knee you guys there is round lap there is round base and we're going to get into all those all those parts but gradually okay i don't want to confuse you now you place the tape you make sure when taking your round knee you make sure that your leg is separated and you go ahead and place the tape around your knee making sure that the tape is a little bit tight and that is how you know your round knee and remember you're not making you're not placing the tape on your actual knee you're placing it one inch or two inches above your actual knee point and that is where you take your round knee And there is something called the round armhole, okay? And this is how you take your round armhole. On your shoulder or where your hand or your arm is connected to your shoulder, you place your tape and you take it round. You make sure your tape goes round your armhole. And that is how you take your round armhole. And also, they have the elbow points. You have your wrist points, which is your full length. That's the length of your sleeves. Now, how do you take your elbow points? You place your tape on your shoulder and then you go down to this joint connecting your hand that is your elbow point and you make sure you take this one inch above the actual elbow point and that is your elbow point and once you have your elbow point you need to take the round measurement of that point so you go ahead and place the tape round to that point you just indicated and that is your round elbow 
And now move to the full length of your sleeve, which is called the wrist. First of all, you have to place your tape from the shoulder. Everything starts from the shoulder, okay? You have to place your tape from the shoulder and then you take it to the, to the smallest part of your hand, which is your wrist. And then once you have it indicated, that's your sleeve length, that's your long sleeve length. Now you have to go ahead and place your tape around your wrist to get your round wrist. So once you have that um, indicated, so like I said, there is something called um, your round lap and there is something called the crotch point. How do you take your crotch point? Um, there are two ways you can do this. The first way is by placing your tape from your desired waistline. We talked about how to know your waistline. So you place your tape from your desired waistline and then you pass that tape between your legs to your desired waistline at the back. So for your front, desired waistline from the front, where you want the waist to be. You place your tape there and you pass your tape between your legs to your desired waistline at the back. So once you do that, you go ahead and um, bring out your tape, find out what you have, divide that number by 2. We're going to get to the division, I don't want to confuse you. But then you have to divide that part by 2 to get your actual crotch point. And then the second way is for you to sit down. I'm going to put the picture up here that shows you how to do that. You sit down and then you place your tape from your waistline and you just take the measurements that's just what the lady on this picture is doing. And that is how you get your crotch point. Your round lap is your high thigh, where your thigh, your thigh is sitting. You place your tape round that point, your round thigh, where very close to your crotch. You place your tape round it, and that is how you get your round lap. Now, this next part is for us to talk about the nipple to nipple. Now, most times when you see people marking the nipple to nipple is when you want to indicate your darts. That is when you need your nipple to nipple. And how do you take that measurement? You place your tape from one nipple to the other nipple. So you know you have two nipples, right? Because you have two breasts. You have two busts. So yes, don't be like, ah, nipple. You have two nipples, you have two busts. So you need to place your tape from one nipple from the right to the left. Make sure you sit on each of the nipples. And whatever number you have, we're going to get to the division part, but that is how you might measure for your, for your nipple to nipple, which is the apex. So you guys, now that we have this measurement uh, indicated, let's go ahead and talk about how do you mark with this measurement. Starting from the shoulder. Now your shoulder is always divided into two. When marking your measurements on a pattern on, or a fabric, you always divide your shoulder measurements by two. And why is that? Because you have just two arms. And then when you're marking, you divide because your fabric is probably folded into two. And then yes, you just have to divide your shoulder by two. I hope that point makes a bit of sense to you. Now the next thing you, you need to know is divide your round bust by four. A lot of people are always confused. Why do you divide your round bust by four? Because you at the front, you have your two breasts, which is your two busts. And then at the back, we still have the bone for the bust indicated on each of the back. And you have the center back demarcating it. So we, we have one, two, three, four. So that is why you always have to divide your round bust by four. The same thing goes to the upper bust, you always divide that by four. And the same thing goes to the under bust, you always divide that measurement by four. Depending on what you're marking though. Now the next is your waistline. Your round waist also is always divided by four. Your round hip is always divided by four. Now the, 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 the measurements that you divide by two are your round lap because your two legs are different. Like you have the two legs sitting differently, they are not attached together, they are not together. So you always divide your round lap by two, your round knee by two, your round base by two, your round arm, oh, sorry, is divided by two because your two hands are sitting differently from each other. Yeah, they are just apart from each other. So you divide it by two. Your round elbow is divided by two, your round wrist is divided by two, and yes, those are the measurements that you divide by two. So you guys, I hope all this I've been saying makes sense to you. Please let me know in the comment section if this was a little bit of help to you, if you're able to understand something that you've not understood before. Let me know in the comment section, and while you're at it, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up.